Hello everyone, another appointment today as far as MRI is concerned. Specifically this time we will illustrate what are the main fat saturation techniques that you might encounter while working with your MR scanner. So if you are an MR radiographer, technologist, or even if you just have a genuine passion for MRI, regardless your job title, I sincerely hope you will find this video a little bit useful. So let's start immediately to address the first family of sequences that allow us to have a suppression of the fat signal in MRI. I'm talking about inversion recovery. In particular today we are going to focus on short tau inversion recovery or better known as STIR. Differently from a standard spin echo sequence, STIR is generally characterized by an inversion time, which is the time between this initial 180 degree pause and the 90 degree excitation pause. This amount of time is crucial in the inversion recovery since it determines the type of signal that we are going to suppress. In a 1.5 MR scanner like the one we are using in this video, the inversion time can range between 150 to 180 milliseconds and it grows the more we increase the strength of the magnetic field. This obviously varies according to the preferences of the radiologist, which might opt for a weaker or a stronger fat saturation. But as we just mentioned, it also really depends on the type of signal that we want to suppress. For instance, in a flare sequence, rather than aiming to suppress the fat, we want to get rid of the signal of the fluid. And as a result, the value for the inversion time would be significantly different compared to the one adopted in a STIR sequence. So what are the benefits of using STIR to suppress the fat signal? The first one, which is probably also the most crucial one, is that this technique allows uniform and global fat saturation as it is quite insensitive to B0 and B1 field in homogeneities, as we can see here right in the example. However, differently from other um, fat saturation techniques, the signal to noise ratio can be pretty limited instead and images may appear sometimes as quite grainy. Plus, it is essential to remember that since this technique is not specific for the fat, it cannot be used post-contrast administration because tissues that take up gadolinium will exhibit T1 shortening and they might accidentally be suppressed as well. Another possibility when it comes to suppressing the fat signal in MRI is relying on the spur technique, or also known as fat set, according to the MR vendor we are using. SPUR literally stands for Spectral Presaturation with Inversion Recovery. It employs kind of all like an hybrid approach which combines the selective saturation of the fat signal using a specific radio frequency pulse and the use of spoiler gradients. So the main difference with STIR is that this time the fat will be selectively saturated rather than suppress only those tissue that fall, in, that fall into a specific inversion time. And to put this in practice, we just need literally to pick up a T1 or T2 sequence from the scanner library and select the first option available in fat water contrast, namely fat saturation. Siemens specifically give us the opportunity to decide the intensity of the fat saturation to get. According to our personal and radiologist preferences, we might opt for a weak or a strong saturation of the fat. Just remember that there will be always, as usual in MRI, advantages and disadvantages from such a choice. Weak Fat saturation requires lower flip angles and as a result could be useful to reduce the SAR if necessary. Also, as we can see from this comparison, using a weak type of fat set enables a more homogeneous saturation of the fat compared to a more strong fat set technique. And this is even more pronounced for larger regions of the body. Nevertheless, regardless the intensity of this fat saturation, spur sequences are generally known to be very sensitive to both B0 
MB1 magnetic field in homogeneities. So it could happen that you might struggle to achieve a good and complete fat saturation of the entire anatomy image with this technique, especially in present of metal implants, for instance. Careful shimming is therefore crucial in spur sequences, especially when we work at very high field strength. Try, if possible, to avoid including too much air in your shim voxel, this green square box. Instead, focus exclusively on the anatomy you want to image. Doing this is essential because spur are frequently used as method of choice for post contrast imaging. Therefore, good quality and homogeneous fat saturation play a crucial role. Now, we have seen spare sequence. We have also an option number three, which is spare sequences, or also called spire. I know the pronunciation can be very variable. As we can see, we haven't actually changed much in terms of sequence structure from the fat set technique we have just evaluated. However, the crucial differences between spare and spire liaises on the type of pose used. In spire, this one, we use an adiabatic inversion pose, which also ex give us kind of like an explanation of the A, which is part of the acronym in the sequence in use. And again, to make the choice related to the type of fat sat technique to be used, we just need to go to the contrast tab and pick this time Spire. As you can see, there is a message popping up asking us to alter some of the extrinsic parameters, in this case, the repetition time, as different techniques are involved and perhaps adjustments might be necessary according to the nature of the fat saturation. Obviously, increasing the TR might increase, for instance, also an important factor like the scan time. So why sometimes we rely on Spire? and therefore on adiabatic pulses. One of the reasons could be that these pulses are designed to be insensitive to variations of the magnetic field strength, and therefore these sequences are overall less sensitive to B1 inhomogeneities. Pay attention to that B0 inhomogeneities will still have a significant impact on the uniformity of the fat saturation that this technique can provide. Therefore, STIR might still be a better option when it comes to ensuring a complete and homogeneous saturation of the fat. On the other hand, it must be said that differently from STIR, SPIRE is suitable for post-contrast image acquisition. So this can be a valuable option when it comes, for instance, repeating a T2 sequence and gadolinium has been already injected. Lastly, we have Dixon, which I'm not gonna hide, is my favorite technique. The Dixon method consists of acquiring multiple MR images with different phase shifts between the water and the fat signals. These images are then processed using specialized, uh, specialized algorithms, which are able basically to separate the two signals and create separate images that highlight each component. Just bear in mind that the water contrast, which is usually the one that interests us the most among those showed here, uh, it basically means that only the water signal is displayed, while the fat will appear as suppressed. And this is vi vice versa for the fat contrast images. Which Dixon reconstructions are required can be chosen on the contrast tab in the sub options for Dixon as displayed here. In-phase images are equivalent to non-fat saturation sequences, which are usually very useful to have on our data set for the final diagnosis. The radiologist may also find valuable information from the out-of-phase images, so if that's the case, just make sure you tick the right option on the tab we had just seen. You can then always subsequently decide which type of contrast to be sent on packs, according to the radiologist's need. But let's focus now on the quality of the fat saturation in Dixon images. Since its nature is based on math computation and post-reconstruction algorithms, the Dixon technique is quite insensitive to both B0 and B1 field inhomogeneities. However, in contrast to stair sequences, 
This technique is also suitable for post-conscious imaging, and this kind of extends his own usage. However, it must be said that this technique is not exempted from artifacts. Users has frequently experienced fat water swap in Dixon images, with the, with the system kind of like producing a fat-only image when a water-only image was desired. Let's see now a quick comparison of the fat techniques evaluated so far. Firstly, I want to mention that to keep this comparison as much fair as possible, the images did not undergo any process of optimization. They have been simply taken from the vendor library and acquired as originally uh, loaded on the scanner. So, Stir and Dixon, which one do you prefer? What are your thoughts? Few things to mention in my opinion. Let me just load once again the video. So, we can immediately recognize what we said before, namely that they are both characterized by an efficient and homogeneous fat suppression. Probably I would say that stir are a little bit more grainy compared to Dixon, but still uh, the con contrastographic differences between different tissues can be very easy to pick it up. So I would say that both are very valuable options when it comes to MSK imaging. Let's compare now our stir with the spire. So with that technique they use adiabatic pulses to suppress selectively the signal of the fat. So we can immediately notice that spire has an overall SNR which is a little bit higher compared to stir as the images appear to be I would say less grainy. However, the suppression uniformity it starts to be slightly less accurate in spare compared to stir. Do not get me wrong, I mean, we still have a very good quality of fat saturation overall. However, the knee is an anatomical area that does not suffer, suffer much from multitude uh, inhomogeneities. Um, if we apply this in an area of the body like the neck, for instance, which is admittedly challenging to, to be imaged uh, because it have different anatomical structure that uh, they are basically very close to each other. Well, that's differences in fat suppression uniformity, they might start to be significantly more visible. So it's better to keep this in mind when using the spire instead of stir. A similar argument can be made when spear or fat sat technique is used Again, in an area like the knee, fat suppression homogeneity is still decent and the SNR level is superior perhaps compared to stir. However, as we said, this type of sequence suffers from field inhomogeneities for both B0 and B1, so bear in mind that even in a small area like the knee, these sequences might be exposed to a significant number of artifacts like in case perhaps in the presence of a knee replacement or partial knee replacement artifacts instead might be definitely less marked on a stir sequence quick recap of what we have seen today so stir fat set spire or dixon which one do you choose and why is that a specific scenario why you recommend one over the others so share your thoughts and with just a comment below that would be extremely useful for the entire community. I personally believe that, as previously mentioned, Dixon has some very strong advantages, not only when it comes to MSK imaging, but also in a broader spectrum of MRI examinations. However, still, spare sequences are allowed to be a very valuable option for post-contrast imaging. And still, again, very useful and it can save us in multitude of situations when we struggle to achieve a uniform fast suppression. Spire, personally I do not use them much but again it depends on the type of scanner you're using. So share your thoughts, feel free to give us your impression and your suggestion that will be very useful. Guys if you have liked this video again please do not forget to subscribe to the channel more content will be published in the next few weeks and we will continue to talk about fat sat techniques but perhaps in a more specific context and in the meantime as usual i will see you around